Hello and welcome to NewsClick. Today, we will be discussing the $5 billion fine imposed on Facebook by the US Federal Trade Commission. To talk more about this, we have with us Prabir Prakashta. Hello, Prabir. Prabir, so uh, the $5 billion amount is actually a settlement between the FTC and Facebook for violations of a 2011 settlement they had reached regarding users' privacy. And while the full details are not out yet, it's largely understood that it's a response to the Cambridge Analytica scandal. So do you see this rec almost record fine to be a meaningful step in actually regulating what Facebook is doing? You know, it might appear to be a very hefty fine. Five billion dollars is not uh, chicken feed. So that is there. But it's interesting how the markets have reacted since every day now, every time anything happens today, we look at the markets for what is supposed to be good or bad. Well, if it was a hefty fine, it should have depressed the stock of Facebook shares instead of that it has actually gone up. So the Facebook is supposed to have had a uh, revenue, profits, not revenue, profits of $22 billion in the last quarter. Now that would seem to indicate that they have, they're really earning a very uh, high income from the kind of business that they do. And this $5 billion therefore is a wrap on the knuckles for 10 years of violating essentially the user uh, shall we say, privacy. Right. Now, we have comment, commented on this earlier extensively that whether it's Google or it's Facebook, the essential model of these companies come from the fact that they have access to private, private data, our private data. They can dice us up as consumers in any way you want. And if we see what the, uh, the leak of the documents which took place with the British one British parliamentarian seized some documents from a traveling person who had these documents of Facebook with him. It is very clear that the way Facebook operates, it essentially extort, extorts money from its, not money from its partners, but extort data from its partners. And if they don't give that data, access to the data for any app on Facebook, then they are generally treated differently, shall we say. And after uh, the Cambridge Analytica scandal, the issue is not that Cambridge Analytica had access to this data, but Facebook's anger was, how is it they could use the data which should have been exclusively used by us for marketing. So the, it's futile to talk about uh, violating users' privacy if the entire business model of Facebook is built on violation of user privacy, which is what it is. So either you look at the market power that Facebook has, or you decide that certain principles you put in place, what constitutes data and how it can be used, neither of which is the direction which either the US uh, government wants to travel, and the FTC at the moment is uh, really, much weaker as a regulatory agency. You know, uh, the monopolies that Facebook and Google have built up in the last 10, 15 years are the most powerful monopolies the world has ever seen and has also been built up over the, you know, over not 50, 60, 70 years as happened with earlier monopolies, but the shortest possible time. So I think the challenge that all governments and the US government because it's a home country for Facebook and Google, but it's also true that Alibaba uh, and uh, WeChat and all are also there, Baidu are also there in China. So the question is how do the go home governments regulate what are essentially global monopolies and what does the rest of the world do? Now, there are some presidential candidates in the US have been talking about breaking up these companies. And yes, that's one possible answer. What are the other regulatory answers or what other answers we can take? I really don't know at this stage. And right now, the strategy generally seems to be imposing fines because recently the Italian uh, government also imposed a one million fine and Ireland is conducting at least 10 inquiries right now. But there seems to be a general lack of clarity on what else can be done in addition to just imposing fines, which, like you said, is actually peanuts as far as Facebook is concerned. You see, this has been also the European Union's attempt to force Google to do a certain set of things and uh, what are called anti-competitive practices. Uh, impose on them fines for violations of anti-competitive practices. They have also may put hefty fines on Google. You know, the problem that is there in this fine model is if violating this uh, anti-competitive practices, say for five years, gets you $20 billion 
of uh, profits, say, over a period of five years, then paying one billion seems to be an entry price. Right. So it becomes instead of buying a license, say on telecom, you buy a fine. Right. So in order to violate the privacy, and this is the buying uh, the license to misuse private data right. is essentially what Facebook and Google are doing in terms of accepting fines in lieu of what this particular order calls egregious violation of privacy. Right. So I think we are in that model that violating privacy for Google and Facebook and a host of others is the basic business model. Right. And since violating of the privacy has a price, they're willing to pay the price as fine right. because otherwise there is no, shall we say, regulatory barrier right. to getting access to private users' private data. Right. Now, if you remember, what was to be said, the airwaves, you had to buy the airwaves mm -hmm. license. Right. So you are buying private data through fines. Right. Seems to be the business model of Google and Facebook. Right. So privacy protection, we must be very clear. Privacy protection in a model which is based on user surveillance is actually meaningless. Right. And therefore, to think that we can protect it in any one other way, except by either law, which enforces certain things, or by regulatory, uh, creating regulatory barriers right. and breaking up monopolies, one of them, is under, at the moment, only two things to do. Right. Otherwise, I'm afraid that we are, we have a really, uh, shall we say, a fine-filled future, right. but it will not have. harm Google and Facebook's growth. This is a price they are willing to pay for, in lieu of, shall we say, untrammeled access to your and my data or our viewers' data. Right. And this is, of course, not even considering the Facebook currency, Libra, that is coming out, which has also faced hearings and similar criticism. And we also have a situation in the global south where most countries actually have not enacted, including India for that matter, have not enacted very strong provisions to stop these companies. And uh, Facebook is actually involved in promoting the internet with free basic schemes in many of these countries. So again, that's a lot. there's another question there as to what these kind of countries will also be in a position to do. So just parsing two separate things out of it. One is the privacy angle that you've talked about and the fact that Google uh, and Facebook are equally guilty about it. But Facebook has the other aspect, which is that it pretends to be uh, the internet and says everything should happen in my ecosystem. So in that sense, uh, while Google also has a similar policy in terms of giving you more and more tools in lieu of which you part with data, Facebook in, sen in that sense also tries to uh, create ecosystems which you don't leave then. And that becomes uh, effectively your internet world. So that's the net neutrality versus free basics debate, which of course, India, Facebook failed to get it through. But in a lot of other places, they have successfully got it. And the zero rating issue is still an issue in different parts of the world. And uh, zero rating, when it comes to even European Union, it's not that clear. They have got a clear uh, policy against zero rating, while well, India we do. So I think those are some of the issues that we have to take into account when you talk about how to regulate these companies. But when you come to currency, and this is an area where Google obviously has not gone this particular way, all the other digital platforms we know create what are called wallets. Wallets are not outside the currency zones. You put in currency money over there, and that stays in the wallet it could also be essentially adding to the reserve of these companies because the wallet, if you don't take out the money, that stays with the company, you don't get any interest, but they could park it in a bank and get interest or invest in other things, get interest. So if you create a wallet, you are actually creating free cash for yourselves. Right. And uh, you are not a banker, so you don't have any obligations what a bank has if you put in money in a bank. But at the same time, you could use the money in all kinds of ways. Uh, this, the wallet is what we have seen till now digital platforms do. Facebook has gone one step ahead. He said, not only am I providing you a wallet, I'm actually providing you a currency. And I'm also going to provide you a currency which will be recognized by other 
people as well. They've got a set of friends who, who, who are also backing the Libra currency. And they have said for verification, as a first step, we will verify. But behind our verification is a bit, uh, bit uh, coin equivalent uh, stuff that we will do, which is that we will also have a verification which will be algorithmically done. Now, how this algorithmic uh, verification will be done, uh, blockchain, what variant of blockchain, etc., we don't know. But it's also clear that blockchain kind of methods, as you know, the number of transactions globally you can do with blockchain is about seven or eight based on current uh, uh, computing power and uh, internet speeds. But this obviously is not sufficient for normal transfers and normal uh, accounting purposes. So while credit card companies can do up to 7,000 per second, this is supposed to be 1,000 per second kind of uh, speeds. So the first layer of ver verification is going to act like a credit card company that some companies verify whether this is money or not. Uh, the blockchain method is supposed to be the second tier. We don't know what the hell it is. So is it a cryptocurrency as it is claiming, Libra is a cryptocurrency or not? We don't know. What it really means is that is it outside the currencies of governments? Because co com companies have not guaranteed money. Governments have, states have. Is it, we are, are we seeing private money creation? Yeah. Uh, instead of wallets, are we really seeing private money creation? And do they lie outside all currency regulations, therefore bypassing all the capital controls, other currency controls that are there? So large amount of money can it flow out of the country through the, this route? These are all open questions. I don't think it's going to be that easy. The regulatory barriers are not going to be given up by other countries. So we might find the Libra is declared declare illegal. So all those possibilities exist. But I do think that Facebook now is moving moving into an issue area where it says not only do I use your private data, but I'll create an ecosystem within which you, you always are going to live and you don't need to have anything else to go out of it. So can it actually envelope Amazon, can it actually envelope all other, uh, shall we say, uh, companies which deal with merchandising? Uh, basically buying and selling. Can they en envelop that system as well within it and become uh, a ecosystem from which you get from internet to goods, all and services, all of it we'll do. And on top of that also we give you a currency within which if you stay in the ecosystem, you don't have to change this currency. I think that's the threat of Libra and it's really a much bigger regulatory threat uh, when it, that it comes to private data. Because money is what every company, every human being in the world and governments use. Therefore, its control going to this kind of hands is a, is a, shall we say, a very daunting prospect given the fact that the way uh, Facebook has dealt with our privacy. I think dealing with Facebook, whose model is an extortionist and predatory model, <coughs> I think is very dangerous for all of us. Thank you, Premier. That's all we have time for today. Keep watching NewsClick.